appreciate all the prayers and all that stuff last week. Those guys reached out through text message and everything. Um, grandmother was 93 and had passed away just a few minutes before I walked in here last week, so it kind of caught me off guard a little bit. But uh, she lived a good life and in a better place now. And I just appreciate those those texts and, and thoughts there. And uh, also our thoughts and prayers. We got a huge ball game this week, but our thoughts and prayers. You know, I'm from the day two eight in the mountains up there. Uh, my family's you know doing good and safe safe uh, from the storm and all those things but so many people aren't so we want to keep those people in our thoughts and prayers and and keep helping out there because you know a lot of a lot of images coming out of there just are, are wild and just shocking so uh, just continue to keep those guys in our thoughts and prayers but uh as we go there so you know obviously you got a busy job how do you balance you know family stuff with that and everything going on back home with you know coordinating the game trying to win yeah i don't think you even think about it you know i think uh you know, it's, it's just like you, you got to keep on going. It's, it's like our players. It's, it's the next play, next play mentality. And what, what we teach them is no different than what we got to do as men or as adults. You know, we, we can't worry about the last play. can't worry about what's going on in our lives. We got to focus on what's next. I keep saying this, like the most, most important day, the biggest day of the year is today. And, and we got to value today. And we got to go attack the next play. And I think that, that carries over to our lives, you know. You got something going on with your family. You got something going on with your job. Uh, you got to focus on what's in front of you and really give that all your attention. And you know, hey, once you take care of that, then you take care of the next play. Uh, that's what we do in football, and that's, I think it carries over to life as well. And you know, I'm blessed to have a, a really good support system at home and with family, my wife, my kids, and everything that that helps me with that too. So there, there's a lot of people. That, it takes it takes a village. We say that all the time in our program here at ECU. Uh, it takes all of Pirate Nation to get this thing done. Pirate Nation was awesome on Saturday and helped us get that win. It takes everybody. So uh, we'll continue to do that. With that said, what has it been like for you since Friday, seeing all those pictures and videos? Yeah, I just, you know, at first you're thinking, what's well, just this little section or that little section? And there's just the more you see, you realize how, how many people are affected up there. Um, you know, and, and you've seen some heavy rainstorms up there, some mudslides before. You know, I 40's always been. Uh, had its issues over the years, especially in the gorge there, but just, uh, you know, the things that happened in Nashville and Boone and Chimney Rock and all those places is just just wild. So, um, you know, and I think about being trapped and having, you know, a 15-mile walk out. You know, for some of us, that, that might be easy on a road, but when all of a sudden trees are down and trying to navigate through the woods or, or the hillside there, that could be kind of tough. So just continue to pray for those folks up there. I wanted to ask you about the, the late hits. Mike Houston said they were good, clean hits. J.D. Lampley told me about the uh, the basketball rule, the, uh, I guess, two steps after your dribble. And uh, So uh, did, did you think they were clean? And, and what did you say to your guys after those? I think it was Sam and, and J.D. Well, that, that's funny. J.D. saying something about basketball. You know, <laughs> I'm sure he's an awful basketball player. Um, and I didn't even know he knew anything about basketball. But that's, that's, uh, that's probably a good way to look at it. At the time, as soon as you see the yellow flag come out, I always, you know, I get upset at the official first, then I get upset at the player, then I get over it after a few, you know, a few seconds. But, uh, you know, I think they said both of those were would have been clean, you know, should have been clean. I think they said the, the long run, uh, the fourth down there, should have been a false start and a face mask, you know, on, on uh, their receiver grab Mike. But none of that matters. You know, you just, we just talked about it. In life, in football, play the next play. Move on, play the next play, make the best of it. So, we got to keep doing that. I, I do like that we're getting pressure on the quarterback and affecting the game there. Uh, you know, it may not show up in the stat categories of sacks, but I certainly think that's causing turnovers, causing him to be uncomfortable back there. I thought um, he was a really good quarterback coming in the game and, and may have graded out. I don't know, PFF, his lowest grade of the year. And I, I would like to think we had something to, to do with that, just the pressure we put on him. You guys were 80% successful on fourth down, about two-thirds successful on third down. What was the difference in the Liberty game and last week? Yeah, I think that the guys just kind of took focus on it throughout the week. You know, our players, when, when they put their mind on something, they, they can go at it. And I think they did a really good job of finishing, finishing the game, finishing third down, finishing the drive, and uh, really attacking there. So I think just a the mindset there. Uh, we got 22 of them, I think, uh, and, and really successful on a bunch of them. So. And the ones that stand out in my mind are the ones we don't get. But, you know, I think it's credit to our players just really locking in and, and, and uh, getting after the quarterback, doing a good job in coverage. I thought we, for the first time all year, too, we did a good job in the secondary. Of, you know, we call it the Tyson PBUs, knocking that ball out, punching that ball out. That's the reason we call it Tyson, just punching it out. And um, we thought we did a good job of that in the secondary because a, a punch out on third down is completion, a gain of zero incompletion, we're off the field. And that's a great, great job winning third down by those young men.
speaking of being off the field, fourth uh, fourth quarter felt like you guys were on the field the whole time. I mean, what, what can you, I know like seven punts there in a matter of moments. Like, what can you say about the way your group continued to just finish out the game? Yeah, I think I read that afterwards that we had like, you know, so many possessions, but I don't think you ever think about that during the game. Just every possession you're out there, you're thinking about going and winning the game and making the play that's going to win the game, getting the third down stop to win the game, getting the fourth down stop to win the game. And, and that was really, you know, on the run that popped out, that was really our mindset. Uh, they were going to go for it on fourth down from their own 35, you know, eight minutes or whatever to go in the game. Hey, we're going to go win the game right here. And I think that's – that's how we're going to call it. That's how we're going to play. We're going to play with the chin out of our toes. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to fly around. You know, you could say, oh, I should have made a call there to, you know, maybe give up the first down, don't give up the home run. Let's, let's go win the game. Let's, let's play that way. Let's play to go win the game. Let's make calls to go win the game. Let's put our young men in positions to go win the game. All right? And I think we'll do that continually for four quarters. We'll have a chance and opportunity to win the game at the end, which we did on Saturday. Charlotte, another year you're preparing for what three quarterbacks? So uh, just yeah. what's what's this week like? And then obviously Max Brown sounds like he's back at practice. Yeah, you you always prepare for you know the starter, the backup, and you know, talk about how guys can be different, and how the offense may vary a little bit or not vary a little bit. What the strengths are, what the weaknesses are of each each young man, whether it be quarterback, running back, receiver, whatever it may be. I think. Uh, uh, the Clark kid played for the first time in two years last week. Uh, so, you know, everybody's going to show up and play against us. We, hey, we ready for it or be prepared for all three. Um, and all three are certainly good quarterbacks. You know, I think all three do a job. They all present different, uh, you know, they'll attack in different ways. So we've got to be prepared for it. But I think that's just part of college football. You, you, there's no injury report right now in college football uh, like the NFL. And until we have that, you're always going to prepare for guys that might be hurt, might not be hurt. And you got to fully expect them to play and, and be healthy and, and be ready to go. Second full week without Savone, how do you think the two guys are really stepping in for him and doing? Yeah, you know, um, I think Lamp had a pick last week, and um, Nash been playing exceptionally well, and, and IBM's raised his game. I, I think the one thing, and you saw it with, with Zakai went out of the game last week, you know, yeah, you're, you're missing Vaughn, you're missing Zakai, but you see the guys around them, they, they just take the next step. They just take the next step. And we talk about every week and every day, hey, today's got to be the best day I've ever had at practice. This Saturday's got to be my best game. Well, why? Because it's the next one. We want to grow each and every single day, grow in each and every single game. I told my guys, if you peak game two, game three, game four, then what are you going to do the rest of the year? You're going to be awful come you know, November. But we want to grow each and every single day as football players, as young men in our communities, whatever it may be. Uh, but you've seen Lamp do that. You've seen Nash do that. Um, and, and they're certainly talented, and you can see them growing more confidence every single snap, and, and they belong out there. They, they look like two starters out there, so just really proud of those two young men. How does a second half like this past Saturday kind of add to the confidence of the entire group after, you know, getting off the field? Yeah, I, I think especially the, the two previous weeks, you know, just uh, that was our mindset, go finish, and, and we proved ourselves and that, hey, we, we can finish. You know, we proved that, hey, we, we've got it, and it's in the third and fourth quarter. Um, I thought that you guys did a better job attacking that all week in practice and, you know, having that mindset and being ready to go approach that and did that in the fourth quarter, especially we just talked about the number of possessions there you had. It would be easy, like, to lose focus there in the fourth quarter when you have that many possessions and give the offense that many opportunities. Uh, but they were, you know, stepped up, kept it going. Uh, the big series I was proud of was when, when they, they had a sudden change. They got the ball down there about the 30-yard line, 25-yard line, and it was a quick four and out. And boom, that that's, that sealed the game pretty much, and and put it away, and and um, that was really good to see by our defense, just the mindset they had there. Um, so just really proud of those guys. I thought, you know, I thought our coaches did a really good job of rotating guys too, especially early in the game, to make sure we're fresh in the fourth quarter when the game's on the line and when it matters. Kind of touching on with Zakai being out, but DJ, you know, Julie and Damian playing the most snaps and looked good. That had to, to give you even more confidence in that group. Going yeah, I mean. Julian Davis, I said to, to the defense on Sunday, I said, you never know when your opportunity is going to come. I mean, Julian Davis goes into the game. He's our third Mike. He plays 20 snaps. He probably hadn't played five snaps of defense in his career here, you know, and uh, goes in there, makes tackles, running around, making plays, and looks like it belongs. And, and you gain – not only does he gain more confidence in himself, his teammates, his coaches, everybody, you know, and, and he's going to play a big role this week. Uh, you know, Zakai may or may, may not be back. Who knows? Uh, we'll be, he's be preparing like he is going to be, and we're going to prepare like he's going to be there and also have adjustments if he's not. Um, and then Day-Day. Day-Day's played the most snaps he's played in the ball game. So just to see those two young men step up and DJ as well and, and you know, fill the void there 
and, and go make plays uh, when it matters, when the game's on the line in a tight ball game against a very good opponent. Uh, was not only good for you know me, I, I was proud of them, but just for themselves as well. So just they, they work so hard, and a lot of times we don't see that on game day. What these young men and what these guys put into in the summer, uh, during during meetings, you know, studying at night, practice, and uh, you never know when your opportunity is going to be, be called. And that was my message to our young guys: uh, just you never know when you're going to get the opportunity. And and Julian got his, and DJ got his, and and Day Day, and they all did a really good job with being prepared. And that's what we got to continue to do. So, and that's that's also good for our depth. Um, I pointed out DJ and Julian, and all all purposes, they're redshirt freshmen, first year players. KJ Merrill, first year player. Jamarley Riddle, first year player. Every single day, you can see those guys growing and getting better, and just you know, really proud of those guys. And we need more guys to step up like that. And the start of personnel wise, you mentioned the quarterback. You know, it seems like they got some good run backs. We know Omega Blake a little bit at receiver. So what do you see from them? Outside yeah, I think they're a very good, good football team. I, I think their their old line is really good. I think solid. If it's when I turn on the uh, tape, I know it's the twitch of those guards coming off the rock. And uh, doubling three techniques and doubling nose guards. And I said, ooh, uh, that was the first thing that caught my attention. I think that center does a good job. Those two guards are really good. Um, you know, they're going to huddle. They're going to shift around, motion around, a lot of eye candy. Almost guard an NFL-style offense where you're going to see them huddle every snap and then break out. And they're going to give you different different pitchers um, to, and different looks. Uh, obviously, the running backs is kind of by a stable back there. There's a bunch of them. They do a really good job getting downhill. Uh, number five, I think 220, 225 pounds. Uh, I like zero back there. I think 21 is a uh, kid from Charlotte there that's, you know, they'll line him up out wide, bring him on the jet sweeps. He's got speed. He can make you miss. He's a return guy as well. Uh, then the receivers, uh, you know, eight catches everything around him. Omega, you talked about him, had a couple deep balls last week. He gets behind the secondary. So we got to stay on top of him. And then I think their tight ends may be the best best room in our in our league. I mean, the tight end group is, is special. 18's, you know, returning from last year. He's the second most targeted player on their, or on their team as far as the receiving core. Uh, 81, 35, all, all big guys that can do a good job in the run game, whether it's on the split zone, the counter, uh, whatever it may be there. So I, I think we got our hands full. we got to do a really good job uh, making sure we stop the run game, take care of their controlled pass game, make sure we don't let Omega and uh, Mac number three get behind us, and, and then on third down put them in positions where they're uncomfortable. So it's uh, – Got our hands full, especially playing down there. I'm excited about Pirate Nation filling up that stadium and, and being loud. And, and um, our guys are, are excited to play an in-state game. All right. All right. Thanks, All right. Thanks, I appreciate you guys.